Hello again and welcome to the Advanced Fantasy AI Tutorials 2.0. This is the second tutorial for this version. Today we're going to be covering Advanced Navigation. So this is the scene that I just set up. It took me about 20 minutes or so. It has mountains, trees, rocks. It's got this nice little house here. And in the house is the rigged female character that I rigged in the first tutorial. And the goal here is we're going to try and get her to travel all the way around these cliffs and go all the way up to this well right here to fetch water because she's a lonely widow and she needs her water to drink okay so there's a few things we need to know about uh, setting up navigation on a terrain now one thing that you could do is you could put mesh rocks on all of your cliffs which is quite common actually but in the case that we don't have mesh rocks, you have to rig your cliffs with colliders because otherwise the, the mesh builder won't know how to build around them. So we're gonna do that right now. And this is, I'm just gonna quickly show you how I would typically do this. So I would just go ahead and add a cube here. Okay, now we're gonna scale this nice and big here. So we're just going to cover these cliffs right here. Because really like there's because it's a two dimensional plane, that's the way that the mesh works. There's really no way of it telling that there's a cliff there. So you have to put an, an obstacle wherever a cliff is. That's that's really what we have to do here. So any areas that you want the AI to go around or avoid, there has to be a collider there. That's that's how it works. So really like just this right here is great. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place colliders around all these cliffs. All right, so I've placed all the colliders around the map. It only took five uh, colliders around this whole canyon area. And then I put one large one on this mountain here and then four more over here, one on the, on the edge of this cliff and also I put it right to the edge so she wouldn't try to run around any other routes and just on the edges here and that should be good so let's grab a navigational mesh so fantasy AI navigation navigational mesh and we're gonna scale this nice and big here So we're going to scale this nice and high too, so it covers everything. All right, this looks good. So we're going to go into the, into the inspector and go to navigational mesh and uncheck the high resolutions. And I think we're going to go with 2300 for this type of size. And I think we should be ready to go. Oh yes. One more thing to do. Remember you have to tag your terrain as ground. Can't forget that. All right, let's give it a try. 2000 resolution. And it's looking good so far. And it, they squeezed through there. Okay, it's looking great. So we're gonna we're gonna copy this and delete the old one and then paste in the new one. All right, so now we're gonna do an inspection. This is really important to do. It's really bad to end up with stray groups of waypoints because the build doesn't doesn't build correctly sometimes if if they're stray groups. And this is one right here. I intentionally put it a little bit past this corner so that you can, these guys are bad. You wanna delete separate waypoints that, that don't connect with the rest of them. But other than that, everything, everything looks really good. Okay, now that we've done uh, the whole terrain area, we're gonna focus on the house now. So we could just 
grab another navigational mesh and do each floor, but that would be really pointless and it would just be a waste because it wouldn't be that efficient because hand placing like this is so simple that we're just going to hand place this. So let's just uh, go into navigation folder and then grab a waypoint. So we're going to do a row, I think, of three here. I'm actually going to scale this to the width of the door right here so that when they approach this waypoint, they won't try to get outside because if they if they collide with it right here, then they would try to cut the corner too much. So we're going to put it at the width of the door. Now you have to understand that you can either connect them through collision or ray casting and generally you want to do collision. So you want to have them close enough. They do scale a tiny bit during the build so that there's a better chance of them colliding together. And then they, they scale back afterwards though. So, All right, so I finished placing waypoints around the house. I'll just give you, give you a little quick look at the layout that I did. So notice how I put a large one here and only put waypoints where I need them and another large one here. So really you wanna build, just build around objects. And here's the downstairs. Notice that I built around the pillar there and and then out the at the outside here we have the one at the door entrance and then we have one really tall one that's going to collide with the terrain waypoints so i think we're ready to give this a try here so we're going to select the navigational mesh and you, you don't need to worry about the waypoints in that house the the navigational mesh will control their stats so we're going to select this one and we're going to make sure that it's above the terrain because we're going to make it so it contours to the ground and that's called make level with ground so you want to check that off the main reason that you want to do this instead of just scaling them really high so that they just collide everywhere you want to hit this so that smooth path works better because smooth path does some calculations that have to do with height so that you can restrict the height that they will jump off of like a cliff or whatever right so or or the height that they go up to to take a shortcut so we're gonna go make level with ground and bake waypoints and let's give it a try and see how it goes and as we can see here they connected with the waypoint at the door entrance and there you go bake successful so we're gonna go to the hierarchy we're going to select all the waypoints and then so hold down shift and select those and then grab the navigational mesh control C and as you can see it went to the contour of the terrain here so we're going to stop the gameplay there delete the old ones paste in the new ones so there we go that's we should be ready to go here so what we're going to do also is we're going to select the navigational mesh and we're going to hide waypoints and we're also going to disable their scripts because it'll run a little faster unless you want to debug to show their connections because you need the scripts running to show the lines connecting. Okay, so let's make it so the AI goes to the well now. We're going to go over the well. And we're just going to simply drag a target node from the navigation folder to the well. All right, so before we test this out, there's one more thing that I want to go over. For areas like staircases and balconies, it's always best to put colliders to block their ray casting vision from spotting this waypoint and thinking, oh, I can go to this waypoint. Because there's really no reason for her to think that she can't go to this waypoint because she can't detect that there's a, a ledge right there and a and a fence. If there was if the fence blocked her vision, then she wouldn't go there. But anyway, so it's best to always put colliders in areas like this. It just it's much safer. Quite often it will work, but always put colliders there, it's safest. So let's give this a try. Let's select our AI character and we're gonna select go to target target locate to the target node that I placed at the well and let's test this out I made her run speed and turn speed fast so that she'll go a little faster 
And there she goes, running a marathon. And out the door she goes. Her smooth path took a really large shortcut there, which is good. And we're getting close. Just cutting through the trees. All right, she made it, and that concludes the navigation tutorial for 2.0.